Today we're going to build another raised bed and our material of choice is using cinder blocks. Now cinder blocks are pretty easy to build a raised bed out of and they're readily available and fairly inexpensive. You can use cinder blocks to build a garden that really fits your size. So you want to think about how much you want to plant, how big of a planting area you'll need, and then also potentially the height. When you're purchasing your cinder blocks, there's two types of blocks to be aware of. The kind that have a concave edge to them, these are called stretcher blocks and they work well for the length of your wall. But for your corners, you want to find a block called a pillar block. And these have a square flat edge to one side of them. And to the other side, it is pretty flat, it just has a line down the middle of it. We're going to build ours that will be about four feet wide by eight foot and we're going to build one that's three cinder blocks high. We could use the same amount of blocks to build three raised beds if we were only using them one block high. So you have to think about that. We have chosen to use ours three high, so of course that's going to limit the amount of planting space that we'll have. So for three levels high and four corners, we're going to need 12 pillar blocks. Once you've identified the layout of your raised bed, the first thing that you're going to need to do is level the soil before you start placing your blocks. If you don't do this, the soil that fills your blocks will naturally level itself and you'll be able to see any indifference inside of that raised bed. So for us to first level our raised bed, you're going to need a flat shovel and also a long level. Because we're building our raised bed on crushed granite screenings, we're using those screenings to build up any low areas to ensure that those blocks remain level. Then at each corner, we are using a square to ensure that they are 90 degree angles and that we have square corners. This first level may take a little longer to construct, and that's because you want to make sure that it is as level and as square as possible to ensure that you're building a good foundation for those extra layers. We went ahead and installed our rebar after we finished our first layer. That's going to make sure our foundation stays set for that second layer. It'll help guide that second layer of bricks. Now when you start your second layer, you want to make sure that you're using another pillar block that has a flat surface. And last time you can see we came from the short side. This time we're going to come from the long side. We want to make sure we offset the bricks just like you would with traditional bricklaying. Because again, we're on crushed granite and we want to keep those screenings as clean as possible, we're going to line our concrete planter raised bed with uh, landscape fabric before we fill it with soil. In order to hold that landscape fabric, we're going to go ahead and lay it down um, so that the edge is covered with that third layer of cinder blocks. Now that we have our third layer on, we're ready to fill our garden. Now I do want to mention again that we could have used the same number of blocks and had three beds. Here we only have 32 square feet of planting uh, surface area. You could have done three beds only one block high and had three times the planting space. While this is going to take a lot of soil to fill, what we're going to do is actually fill it first with straw. Now, straw is a carbon material, so it is going to tie up a lot of nitrogen. So we want to make sure that once we start planting our plants, we are supplementing them with nitrogen fertilizer. But this will help reduce the volume of soil that we have to use to fill our garden. 
Another added benefit of incorporating the straw is that it will eventually break down to add organic matter into our soil. So we filled our raised bed up with some straw to help fill some of that volume, but now on top of that we've got a mix of topsoil and compost that we're going to add for those roots to get established in. Now that we've got our soil in place, we're almost ready to plant. But before we do that, we're going to add some nitrogen onto our planting surface area here. Because we put straw down, we know that it's going to tie up a lot of that nitrogen to help that break down. So we want to make sure that we continue to provide nitrogen um, to our plants throughout the growing season. As we incorporate this on top of the soil surface, when we plant, we'll be able to work that into the soil a little bit better. We have a couple of different varieties of squash here. Um, two are actually zucchini. Um, the one question that we often get asked about with squash is that your plant is flowering but it's just not producing enough. Well there's something you should know about squash. Squash are a monoecious plant which means they have both male and female reproductive parts on one plant. Monoecious meaning one house, one plant. Now the thing is though is did you know that squash actually have two different types of flowers? While they both look kind of this orange color flower, there's actually a male and a female flower to a squash plant. You can see here there is a female flower that they tend to be more towards the center of the plant and they have kind of this swollen part right below the flower bud. The swollen part is the ovary that once it's fertilized from the male flower, it will swell and develop into the squash fruit that we eat. Now these female plants tend to be closer to the center of the plant. If we turn it around here, you'll see there is a flower that's sticking well above the plant. And this is a male flower. You can see there's no swollen area below the blossom here. Now male, male flowers tend to bloom before the female flowers on squash plants. And that's kind of a signal to the pollinators to start visiting this plant. So you might find that your squash plant is blooming, but they're likely male flowers first and then the female flowers will come on later. Now they'll continue to bloom both together in order to have pollinization happen. So this particular plant is a baby bush uh, zucchini. Now it is a true miniature in the fact that not only will we get a smaller plant, but we'll also get a smaller uh, fruit on it as well. We'll want to harvest this when the fruit is about four to six inches. So you can see we've got some fruit that's already starting to develop on these. Now with all warm season crops, you want to make sure you're planting them around mid-April. And we want to plant this at the level that it was in the pot. So unlike tomatoes that you can plant a little bit deeper squash, we want to make sure that we're planting it right at the soil level. So this is a smaller variety, so we can plant a few more closer together and we'll be able to harvest these soon. Now the other plant that we have here, it's also a zucchini. And this one is called Patio Star. And it's also a miniature and well suited for planting in a container even. You can see here we've got some female uh, flowers that have already faded, but we've got the fruit that's starting to come on. We also have some male flowers that are still setting here. Now this patio star, while it's a miniature uh, plant, the fruit actually is going to be your traditional size on it. We've got a few roots here that are starting to wind around a little bit, so we'll kind of gently break those apart and we'll move that soil in around that plant. Because these are miniatures, we can add a few more into this flower bed. We can't plant squash and not talk about how to deal with the squash bug because we all know that they will find our squash. 
If you remember from last year, there was some research that was showing how you can use a cover uh, cloth to protect your squash plants from those squash bugs. So that's what we're doing here. We've got some simple, cheap PVC pipe that we've bent. And the nice thing about this concrete block planter is it provides those holes to support our structure here. Now we're just gonna stretch some remay cloth over this and we will open it during the morning. So research has found that really our squash flowers are only blooming from about dawn to mid morning. So that's the only time that we need to allow those pollinators to get to our plant in order to have our fruit. Now if uncovering these plants every morning and afternoon gets a little too high maintenance, then you can do what's called succession planting. And that's when you plant another crop a little bit later. We could go ahead and leave these uncovered and keep the succession crop covered with remay. When the squash bug finds this plant, we can then go on to the next succession crop, uncover it, and begin harvesting from it. So if you're looking to build a garden or perhaps expand yours, think about building a raised bed out of cinder blocks. They're versatile and easy to do. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.